So today I am not sure where I'm going yet. I'm in a pretty miserable mood lately and I need to get out and try to find a place to go clear my head. So that's the whole goal of today's ride. No destination in mind, just heading out to have some peace. So for those of you that haven't been around in the beginning of my YouTube channel, I used to uh, be quite open about my mental health struggles. I'm a, uh, Sorry, I can't uh, focus on something else and talk at the same time. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I'm ex-military. I used to be uh, in the Canadian Forces, and right now I'm dealing with life with post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, and all the other bells and whistles that come along with that. In the last few months, I've been really struggling trying to find a groove again. Like I go out, I buy all this camera gear so I can come out and record my little videos and make myself at peace for a few moments, watch it again, and then... And then uh, all of a sudden feel like, crap, I got nothing to do again. But it's, uh, and it's different symptoms hit me at different times, different uh, parts of my illness, I guess, struggle, I struggle with. For example, lately, it's more so the depression and the anxiety than anything. And if you have depression before, then you know how much it sucks. Because no matter how great life is around you, you're always in this dark place and it's just not fun you don't want to do anything you don't want to see anybody and it's not that you don't want to it's you feel like you don't want to one of the common things though with depression and anxiety is both throw your curveballs and make you not want to do things that you used to enjoy. For example, with the depression and the anxiety, I used to have a, a major outlet, and that was um, writing. I used to do a lot of writing. I'd write poetry, I'd write journals at the end of the day, but lately I can't even get two thoughts ahead. It's like anything more that requires more than a second thought process, I might as well give up on it. And along with writing, like I can't watch TV shows because I don't recall what I'm watching. I Anyway, I'm not going to drag you out with all this because I can keep going over and over with examples of why depression has taken a toll on me. And it's the same thing with the anxiety, though. It's like you're constantly in fear. It's, uh, and it's weird because you know... You rationalize things when you're sitting at home and realize, okay, there's nothing to be scared of, but yet your mind tells you there's things to be scared of, even when there's nothing happening. Even riding a motorcycle today, for example, it took a lot of effort for me to get out and actually do this today. I rode my motorcycle quite a few times. I got about 30,000 kilometers on this bike, so I know there's nothing afraid or to be afraid of while riding a bike. But yet, when I wake up and I think to myself, I'm going to go for a motorcycle ride, then all of a sudden these worst case scenarios start kicking in. You start stressing over things. What if I get a flat tire? What if I run out of gas? I mean, it's all silly stuff. Like, what if something happens and have being extremely awkward? Like, I'd sooner, if I crashed, I'd be more concerned about inconvenience and someone to stop and take care of my injured body than I would about crashing. And uh, it's, uh, it's a weird feeling. It's like you're constantly late for a flight. 
that's how you feel. Like, you know, when you're at an airport and like, holy crap, well, my connecting flight is boarding. And I uh, still, uh, I still gotta get through security. <laughs> it's like that constant feeling. And I don't know, it's probably from the PTSD, but it's also a lot of it's just from the military service in general, probably. I mean, everything's urgent. You get from point A to point B is an urgent. Everything's an emergency. And getting from point A to B can be the difference between life and death. So it's hard to... Uh, sorry, again, I can't talk when I'm doing this. <laughs> anyway, this is Signal Hill. Just to give you a little break, a little idea of where I'm at. I was going to stop, but it seems to be a pretty busy day today. Everybody's up seeing the Newfoundland dog. See, already I got distracted by Signal Hill. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about the depression and anxiety. But that's what I'm dealing with, and it's a struggle to get out and do these things most days. Like I'd say 90% of the time. Like, it's things I enjoy. I mean, look at this. Look around. Look at this beautiful scenery. Why wouldn't I want to be out in this instead of sitting at home being miserable? There's another way that PTSD has a huge impact on me as well, and it's probably contributing to the depression and the anxiety. It's all, it's all interconnected somehow. And it's, uh, that's the, um, sorry, <laughs> I wasn't sure if that lady was crossing. Self-esteem issues, that's another big one. Self-esteem is huge, and it takes a huge toll on me. I pretty much have none. It's like everything I do, I feel like I'm being critiqued or judged. It's almost like everything's a, a military assessment of some sort. And anybody who's been in the military knows what that can be like. <laughs> It's like I have physical self-esteem issues. There's a lot of things I won't do, places I won't go because of the way I feel about my appearance and my abilities. And it bloody sucks. But Kitty Vitty is uh, definitely helping the mood a bit. Maybe I'll see if I can find somewhere around here to park and have a coffee. Because coffee always tends to cheer me up. Busy spot down here. You can easily tell it's a holiday today. I'm not sure what's going on. People are probably just hanging out and eating. Now, where can I park? I hate parking. Again, self-esteem issues. I get anxious and paranoid over that. Like, am I parking in the wrong place? Am I gonna upset somebody? Yeah. So at least you got a view to enjoy while I'm uh, whining about my life. Not really whining about it, kind of talking about it. Instead of a walk and talk, I'm doing a ride and talk. This is my venting session, getting things off my chest. Although I got a psychologist appointment tomorrow, so I could easily wait to talk to her, but... 
this is kind of helping because I'm not sitting at home surrounded by distractions and right now I'm out with less distractions. I'm more focused on my bike and not uh, hitting loose gravel or potholes or traffic or anything like that. So it kind of uh, forces you to not dwell on things. But I'm not a multitasker so it's hard for me to talk and ride at the same time. I think I might just see if there's a spot down here. I don't know how many of you have not been to Kitty Vitty before. Apparently we're going by British driving rules coming up on the wrong side of the road. That's common in Newfoundland. <laughs> so there's the Kitty Vitty brewery over there. I might uh, walk up to the top of that hill if I can find somewhere to park. I think I can park back there. Let's go up there and sit down with my coffee. Although I should have wore something different because I don't like hiking in jeans. So it's not really going to be a hike, it's more going to be a stroll. A leisurely stroll is the best way to put it. Yes, I did a Yui without crashing my bike. How was that? <laughs> I'm lazy, I'm going to move up one more. Why not, right? There. I almost never notice these rocks with their awesome, fabulous camouflage paint. They blend right in. <laughs> so for those who haven't hiked this area, this is the Sugarloaf Path. It's part of the East Coast Trail. I'm not going the full distance. Uh, it's over almost nine kilometers one way. <laughs> So definitely not going. I think I'm going to uh, just find a little spot up here on the edge of the cliff and relax. Use at your own risk. No fires, vehicles, bikes, or horses. Bye. I'm so glad I didn't bring my horse. What a view, hey? Whew, out of breath. So back that way you have Country Ribbon and the Canadian Forces Base, St. John's, all by Kitty Vitty Lake. This is Kitty Vitty Village. Kitty Vitty Gut. And way over that way is Sugarloaf. Well, the entire trail is Sugarloaf, but. I think I'm gonna sit right here and have my coffee. Could go down lower, but I'm gonna fly my drone as well, so get a nice view up here.
Time for the old taste test. Oh, it's better today than it was yesterday, that's for sure. This will do. I'm done talking about depression and anxiety and PTSD for now. I've been here for 20 minutes or so, making my coffee, catching a few clips, and I'm already in a peaceful state right now, so I don't want to ruin it. So, time to change the subject. How about Kitty Vitty Village? Anyway, there's a message to this. You get out and do things that are distracting that you find mindful and, and they help. And I know that, I fully understand that. It's just hard to get out. It's getting over that first hurdle of figuring out, okay, where am I gonna go? It's like today, I had no idea where I was going. I wandered around, went to Signal Hill. It was too crowded up there. So I decided this place. I didn't decide it, it found me. Salam the year, not here for Yakimeria. Tiri for Gimeria, Tiri for Yakimeria. Tiri for Gimeria, Tiri for Yakimeria. Tiri for Gimeria, Tiri for Yakimeria. Tiri fog le hogu ginsan na tiri fog yagi meria. Tiri fog le hogu gat fal na tiri fog yagi meria. 
tiri fog at lo hurriya tiri fog ye gimeriya tiri fog tan miya wa salam tiri fog ye gimeriya tiri fog amnu istigrar tiri fog ye gimeriya tiri fog gimeriya tiri fog ye gimeriya tiri fog gimeriya tiri fog ye gimeriya tiri fog gimeriya tiri fog all right i'm all done all packed up and cleaned up, ready to head back. Feeling much better now after these, uh, after the last hour or so, sitting up here enjoying the sights, the sounds, the smells, the sun warm on my face. It's all the small things that, uh, that you need in life to bring you that sense of awe back, that sense of connection. And that's what coming over here done for me today. It reconnected me, reset. Ready for another day. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy the view while I'm coming down. This is not good on my knees. That's a good sign, my motorcycle's still here. Look both ways before crossing the road. Drivers in this province are nuts, they would run you over. True story. Actually had a guy crank on the gas at a crosswalk at the hospital a couple months ago. Had a few words with him. Anyway, take care everybody. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of this stuff. Less depressing though. It's usually nature without me talking, but today was different. And I hope that was okay because I feel better. So thank you for making me feel better.